Decorator crabs are the fashionistas of the ocean, and like fashionistas here on land, are both beautiful and a little creepy looking. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. Finding commonalities between ourselves and other animals is key to developing an interest in them, especially when it comes to conservation. It's easier to care about an animal that you can relate to, like a panda falling down for no reason, a parrot jumping up and down in excitement, or a lion yawning. Yet with decorator crabs, what we have most in common with them isn't a perceived emotion, but our sense of fashion. Unlike many other camouflage experts that we've talked about before, like the octopus or cuttlefish, who've all evolved complex color and texture changing systems to help them blend into their surroundings, decorator crabs have gone the opposite way and instead, they simply learn to pick stuff up and stick it to themselves. Don't work hard, work smart. Decorator crabs are covered in stiff little bristle-like structures called setae, which they use to attach things to, like seaweed, sponges, and algae. They're basically like living Velcro. There are several different species of decorator crab, but they all belong to the Majoidae superfamily. They can be found all over the world in relatively shallow, warm waters. There are two main reasons why decorator crabs will decorate. One, for camouflage, and two, to warn predators to back off, called aposematism. Let's talk about the first, camouflage. In the decorator crab world, there are three schools of thought on camouflage. One group are the generalists and will attach anything they can find in their environment proportionally to their availability. This allows for easy background matching as their attachments match their environments. And if they ever travel to a new location, they can just take off their old decorations and pick up new ones. No need for complex evolutionary color changing systems. The second, much smaller group prefers to decorate themselves with the same things that they like to eat, mostly algae, sponges, small crustaceans, and bryozoans. The third group are easily the coolest. I mentioned aposematism before. This is when you use your body, typically coloring, as a warning signal to potential predators. These decorator crabs will decorate themselves with toxic plants and immobile animals like sea sponges, barnacles, and stinging sea anemones. They can then wield these toxic attachments in defense if anything comes looking for lunch. Decorator crabs have been known to form mutually beneficial relationships with sea anemones, specifically Ampholoba acades. This venomous anemone provides protection for the crab, and the crab provides food for the anemone. The other core component of camouflage is the ability to stay very, very still. Something decorator crabs excel at, spending most of the day completely motionless. Gathering decorations is a never-ending quest for a decorator crab. As they grow, they have more surface area to cover and need more decorations. Also, since crabs molt and lose their shells as they get larger, they'll either need to recycle their decorations or gather an entirely new set. As the decorator crabs get bigger, they have fewer predators and require more and more decorations to cover their bodies, and thus they decorate less. The need to decorate is a need that we share with decorator crabs. Though, while decorator crabs decorate in order to blend in, we tend to do it to stand out. What animals should I talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week. Thanks for watching! Gathering decorations is a never-ending quest for a decorator crab. Quab. Decorator quib. <laughs>